Well, hey, welcome everybody to Control Alt Achieve Live for March 6th of 2023. So excited to be with you guys tonight. Thank you so much for either joining live or for watching the recording later. Either way, really appreciate you taking the time to learn with me here. Uh, as always, all of the resources that we're going to be looking at tonight can be found at bit.ly slash CAA dash live. That'll get you to this Google document where if you scroll on down to the second page, you will see the resources that we'll be exploring here tonight, as well as the ones we've explored in many weeks before. Uh, lots and lots of weeks worth of resources there. So I'll give you a moment to get all of that queued up while doing that. I'll do a quick introduction. So hi, everybody. My name is Eric Kurtz. I'm a uh, educator in Northeast Ohio. Uh, I support about 35 school districts here as a technology integration coach. That's my day job. And then on the side, I run the website Control Alt Achieve, where I share out all of my ed tech resources and uh, templates and projects and videos and updates and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can stay connected with me at the top of our document tonight. You will see uh, all of my contact info there with the blog, email, Twitter, YouTube. You can sign up for my email newsletter. You you can join our email discussion group. It has been really active lately with so many great questions and comments and people supporting each other. Uh, lots of ways to get plugged. And so whatever way works for you to connect with me, uh, please take advantage of that. Again, all those links there at the top of the document. Um, we typically do these on Monday nights. Um, uh, just heads up next week, we will not have a live stream. I am doing some traveling and so we'll not be able to do a live stream next week. So uh, we'll be back March 20th and 27th. But you can see all those links coming up there uh, and uh, get those added to your calendar. You can also just add the entire Control Alt Achieve calendar to your Google Calendar, and that way you'll never miss any upcoming uh, events. Um, I also would love to hear from you guys, and so there's lots of ways for you to give feedback during this uh, webinar, this live stream tonight. Uh, you can just use the chat for whatever service you are using to watch this. I see a lot of people saying hi. It's wonderful to see people saying hi. Uh, I see Peggy just said hello there. Great to have you there. I see Jessica is with us tonight. Thank you so much. And Anna as well. A lot of folks joining us from all around, and I really appreciate that. So please feel free to keep throwing things into the chat. I'll do my best to keep an eye on that on this other monitor here and respond to your questions and comments and suggestions. You can also leave comments right in this document as well as through a link to Google form. Any of those are options to provide feedback. All right. Well, again, hopefully I gave everybody a little bit of time to get settled in. One more time, just as a reminder, bit.ly slash CAA dash live will always get you to this document. Well, let's go ahead and scroll on down to page two and take a look at what we're looking at this week. So as always, I try to share things I came across from around the web and then things I have shared on my site recently. And so uh, this week, I've got three things that I came across around the web and one new post that I put up on my site. So let's start off with the things from around the web. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off our uh, banner so we can see this a little bit better. And I'm just going to uh, turn off my camera so you guys can just focus on what I am sharing here. That'll be a little bit easier. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and start with our first one here, which is called Verbal Workout. All right. So heads up. First thing about this site is it's not too colorful. <laughs> it's a pretty basic looking site, but hey, that's okay. It kind of reminds me of like Craigslist, <laughs> you know, where it's like a really simple looking site, but really valuable. <laughs> so don't be too quick to judge the site by the fact that it's mostly just black and white text. <laughs> but Verbal Workout is a free site with interactive exercises for commonly taught middle school and high school books. Now, it basically has four different uh, activities that it encourages people to do when you pick a book. There's a, uh, um, a set of um, uh, key words, like key vocabulary words that they pull from the book. And so before reading the book, uh, they have an option to go through those vocabulary words in typical sentences to kind of get used to what the words are that you may be coming across and a pre-reading quiz to take that still, you know, just gives you general word awareness uh, to help you understand what you're going to be 
he's seeing in the book. Then after reading the book, they have, again, uh, I, those words pulled out, but this time they have them uh, with example sentences from the book, and they have a post-reading quiz as well. I believe they've got over a thousand books that have had these uh, these resources developed for. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to go ahead and give a click on verbal workout, head over to the website. And again, like I said, it's pretty basic. <laughs> You're not going to see a whole lot of stuff here as far as, you know, uh, color and so forth. Um, but when you get here, you can just search by book or author, or you can use their popular book lists, and that will allow you to drill into those. And they've also got a menu here where you can get more details for some teacher support and things like that, which is all very nice. Uh, but let's just go ahead and say, oh, we'll look for popular high school books. That's fine. And so not every book that's in the list here is going to have all of their content yet. You'll see there may be a few here that uh, have not been done yet. But again, I believe they said they have over like a thousand books. So I don't know, maybe we'll do the uh, the Great Gatsby. We'll just grab that since that's at the top there. And again, here's what I mentioned. There's four different activities that you can do for a book. And it's not like you have to do anything in a certain way. It's it's up to you. You can you do whatever. But their normal suggestion is that you do the top two before the book and the bottom two after the book. So, for example, uh, the words, they, they pulled out some key words. So there's the typical sentences. And basically what this is going to do is you can do like the top ranked words or you can do extra credit words or you can do all of the words that they have pulled out as far as keywords. Um, and then you can also narrow this down further if you just want to look at certain chapters of the book. Like, hey, we're just looking at chapters, you know, one through three at the moment. You can narrow this down in so many ways. But for right now, just to keep it simple, top 20 words from uh, from from the book uh, that you know uh, could could be important to understand what, when going into it, and if it's in, and they also give you different forms of that word, so you can see the word in different forms. And here they're using them in what they call typical sentences. And so these are not sentences from the book; they're just sentences that are using these words, give you a good way to see them in these different uh, uh, these different uh, formats. Then there is a pre-reading quiz. So after you've Kind of gotten used to some of the key words you're going to come across. There's the pre-reading quiz. And again, it's not pulling sentences from the book. It's just using these words in this quiz format. And you can go through these 20 questions here as you are preparing uh, to read the uh, to read the book. Okay. Then after the book's over, there's the post-reading quiz and the book sentences. So the book sentences, now it's those words again, but now we're seeing them in the context of the book. So it's further reinforcing what you have read. And of course, you can sort this in the order that it showed up in the book or by rank or by alphabetical. And then there is the post-reading quiz, which now we're actually pulling content from the book. So we have 20 questions that is pulling from the book and it will take you through that quiz. And again, not fancy, not, not flashy, <laughs> but with over a thousand books for middle schoolers and high schoolers, this could be a really nice way to provide some additional support to them. So wanted to get that on your radar uh, as a site that I thought, uh, could have some definite value for folks. All right, that is verbal workout. Oh, we see a few more people saying hi. So I'm going to try to pause in between each of these. I just, uh, so uh, hey to, to, uh, to Federico and hey to Kristen. Awesome. So thank you guys so much for being here. Excellent. Uh, Peggy's saying this uh, last resource does look very interesting, certainly easy to use, and a real time saver for teachers if they find the books that they need. Ah, oh, and Teresa's here too. Hey, Teresa, thanks so much for joining us. Awesome. All right. Well, let's keep on moving. So the second uh, resource that I came across from around the web is Taboo AI. All right. So let's chat about Taboo AI. Now, you probably know the game Taboo. It's been around for Ever. That's the game where you're on, you know, you're trying to get your team to say a word and, you know, you've got the word in front of you, but then you have a list of like words you're not allowed to use, like really common words that would be helpful if you're trying to get them to guess something. Well, that's what this is, but this is an AI version of it. So the idea is you're playing against an AI. Uh, you're going to be given the word 
that you're trying to get the AI to guess. And it can be from categories um, or you can use the AI generated uh, options, which I'll show you that. I really like that. And then basically, once you have the words, uh, you now start typing in uh, your clues to the AI to try to get it to guess the word. But of course, you've been given a list of words you're not allowed to say. And uh, you try to get the AI to guess uh, five words. You've got five rounds that you're going through. And there's a timer counting down. And the further it goes, the, the lower your score will be. Uh, but at the end, if you get through all five words, you win the game. Okay. Now, I think this is great. It's great for content knowledge because you could pick a topic uh, related to whatever it is you're learning about in school. And the AI will generate the keywords, the, the, the words you're trying to guess, and it will generate the words you're not allowed to say. And so you've got, you get content knowledge, but also just vocabulary skills, being able to, you know, think of synonyms or other ways to describe something. Okay. So I think this could be a really fun game uh, to play with a nice educational twist. So let's try it out. So let's go ahead and head over to Taboo AI. And when we get there, we're going to say choose topics. And they do have, like I said, some pre-made topic categories. You can do those. That's fine. But honestly, I think this AI mode is really good. I really like this because with AI mode, you're typing in what the topic is. So it's not like they've already come up with these. There's not like a pre-made list. You can pick any topic at all. And the AI is going to go out and find these. So you just think about, well, what are we learning in class today? What is the, what is the topic of this unit? And so you can tie it right into what you're learning about in school. And you can choose a, a, a difficulty level as to how hard the words are. Now, I'm going to keep this really simple for me today. And I'm going to choose marine animals. <laughs> I've tried a couple of them here. I think marine animals will probably be fine. And I'll say confirm. So now the AI is going, okay, it's going to pick some words. And the first one it pick was shark. Okay. And now at the bottom, it may be hard to see. I'll, I'll try to read them. It's saying I'm not allowed to say ocean, predator, jaws, fins, teeth, cartilage, carnivore, great, hammerhead, whale, or shark. <laughs> and so now I'm going to be like, okay, um, let's, <laughs> okay, it's a shark. So let's see. Uh, 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 animal that lives in the water and, um, Hmm. <laughs> let's see. Um, let's see. And uh, breathes, uh, breathes in the water and is very dangerous. I don't know. I, I, I'm trying here, guys. We'll see. We'll see. Because I wouldn't want to think of it as like an orca because that doesn't breathe in the water, but a shark would. Um, let's see. Oh, what did it come up with? Oh, it did a crocodile. Oh, no. So I haven't got it yet. I can't say it has a fin. So I could say something like, uh, I can't say predator. <laughs> so see, here we go. You know, I've got to figure out how do I describe this and my times, you know, getting less, my points are getting lower as it goes. So I have to keep amending this. I'm trying to think, anybody have a good suggestion <laughs> what to put in for a shark? Um, I try to think what uh, what else would be a good, see, I, I'm afraid I'm not going to do too well on this one. Uh, but um, so I'd have to think what else, and so there you go, there's the content knowledge. What else do I know about a shark where I can't say some of these key things, uh, you know, and uh, so I'm, I'm looking to see. I'm looking to see if anybody has a good, has a good suggestion in the chat, and I'm not seeing anything. Come on, guys, help me out here. <laughs> but you get the idea. And so uh, again, I would keep on uh, trying to add more things in here. Uh, obviously, it's not. It's not that. So maybe I could say, uh, and is a type. It's a shark, a fish. Yeah, it's a type of fish, isn't it? Because a shark, is it a fish? Uh, I hope it is. I'm going to embarrass myself here. Because, um, yeah, it is a good, good just, yeah, because like a whale is a mammal, but a shark's not. Oh, jeez. <laughs> here you go. See, <laughs> I got it. I finally got it. It's a fish. <laughs> okay. And now we move on. <laughs> so, so there you go. You get the idea. But we got five rounds of this. But think about that. What a neat way to have these AI generated and really push you on your content knowledge and also on picking good words there. So, oh, Jessica said it smells blood. That would be a good one. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you for, for uh, mentioning that. Yeah, Jessica says she loves it. There's no login needed. You're right. You can just play this just as it is. Um, and that is, that is great. Yeah. 
Excellent. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and we'll pop back out of that, but it's as easy as that, really. So I would say, try it out, go in and use AI mode. And uh, I think this could really work well with different grade levels, different subject areas. Uh, I think it could be a real fun time. So, all right, that's Taboo AI. Good stuff. Let's keep on moving here. So our last one from around the web, before we move to my new stuff, is the Achievery. So let's talk about the Achievery. So the Achievery is, uh, it's actually from AT&T. It's an AT&T thing where they partnered up with Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network. And so basically what you got here, the Achievery is um, uh, clips. So, so, you know, video clips from popular movies, from popular TV shows, from cartoons. And what they've done is they've paired up these clips with lessons and learning activities. Uh, they've got things for social emotional learning, ELA, uh, science, social studies, math, technology, engineering, on and on and on down the line. And they also have lesson plans that go with each one of these pairings. And so basically what you're getting is a clip that you're allowed to use. You know, it's no, no concern about, oh, am I allowed to use this? I mean, this is, it is from Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network and AT&T. They partnered up on this. So it's totally cool. You're allowed to use these clips, but they've put the clips together with learning activities. So let's go ahead and head over to the Achievery and they've got stuff for K-12. So the whole whole range is covered here. So head over to the Achievery. Um, I think I'm already logged in, but if not, you can just log in with a Google account. You don't need like anything special. You can just log in with a Google account. And then of course you can drill into the categories. Uh, they've got a few things that they pulled out to sort of, you know, highlight. I'm just gonna go up to the all units at the top. That'll be the easiest way to show you everything. So if go up to all units, you'll see that you can say, okay, I'm looking for grade A, or I'm looking for grade 11 through 12, or you can narrow down there if you want. You can also put in a, a description up here if there's something you're specifically looking for. You can also pick topics, you know, math, science, ELA, things like that. And they even have common core standards that these have been aligned to. Um, and then like where it's from, you know, what's the, you know, what's the organization? Is it coming from Warner Brothers or, you know, where, where is it from? And then also what type of media is it? Is it animation, documentary, educational videos, in a movie, is it a podcast, is it a TV show? So I'll just pick movie real quick and just apply the selection. So here's a couple of ones where they've, they've got movies. They have things from Wonder Woman and Where the Wild Things Are and the Lego Batman movie and Shazam and Iron Giant. So here's like the Lego Batman movie. I'll grab that one. And for this, um, it's some uh, some lessons for grades seven and eight that cover SEL and English language arts. And what you'll have down here are the clips. So they've got three clips. Sometimes they have less, sometimes they have more. It just depends on when they have three clips from it. But each clip is its own lesson. You can do them all together if you want to make a, a stacked lesson of all these, or you can just do them individually as well. Um, but basically, you can, you can play the clip. It's not going to be long, you know, a few minutes for the clip. And then they have a lesson plan that goes along with it. The lesson plans are very nice and detailed, the standards, uh, the, the, the competencies, uh, you've got uh, some uh, some scripts to use, like in when you introduce this, so you know exactly you know what you can say before you play the clip, some key vocabulary, some discussions for afterwards, and then and, uh, some, some exercise, something for them to do, in this case, writing a paragraph, and they've got some guidance on that. So really nice to have all of that just readily available there tied into some popular movies and TV and other resources. So that's the Achievery. Check that out. Uh, good stuff there. All right. Well, that brings us to our last thing for tonight. Those are the three things from around the web. Uh, we're going to switch over to new things from mine. Let me take another quick look and see. Looks like we're getting some good uh, some good comments uh, from everybody who's here uh, appreciating these resources. I'm glad, uh, excited that uh, you're finding these valuable. All right, well, let's move on to the last thing, which is going to be what I have added recently to my site, and that is the tier list activity. So I'll go ahead and pop this open. Um, this is a blog post I just put up uh, yesterday. So this is brand new, hot off the presses <laughs> here, but it's one I've been working on for Ah, at least a month or so. Uh, this is one that's been cooking for a while. I've been testing this out and trying this with some folks and I was ready to share it with the world. Okay, so what is this all about? So first of all, um, a tier list is not something that I came up with. I mean, tier lists exist 
this. They've been around for a while. A tier list is a way of ranking things. And this particular type of a tier list that inspired me is one that is often used for like, it came out of the video game world. So here's an example of one. I, this is not mine. This is just an example of one that somebody has shared online. So I've seen these before. I've seen YouTube videos where people, they'll do a whole video where they rank things on a tier list. And it mostly, again, came out of the video game culture. And the idea is you've got A through F as the normal letter grades, A the highest and F the lowest, but then it also has an S tier. Now, from what I understand, that comes from the Japanese word for exemplary, like the highest level possible. I'm not sure what the word is, but, but the S comes from that. So it's like a, a grade above an A, you know? And so that is kind of how this developed. It's not that this is written in stone. You have to have these exact tiers, but it's the idea that there's a highest and a lowest level and people would drag and drop and rank things in those tiers. And they would explain their rationale. Why, why did you do that? Well, I was like, that's really cool. So I've seen a lot of videos where people have done this over the years. And I thought, what if we did this educationally? What if we took this idea and made an activity out of it? And so that's what this is. This is a tier list activity. Now you don't have to do it exactly the way I'm describing it here, but um, I think this is a pretty good way to approach it. And basically the idea is we're looking at a very short activity. We're talking 15 minutes, 30 minutes. You're absolutely doing this during a class period. You're not, you know, it could be a portion of a class period. You're still moving on to other things. Uh, it's going to be a high engagement student activity. There's going to be critical thinking, communication, comparing, contrasting, prioritizing, defending rationales. And really you can use this for any subject, any grade level. You can use it multiple times throughout the year, keep swapping different content in. And so there's a video here, 12 minutes video that you can check out and it's got all the details. I'm going to give you the real quick, short rundown from how this works. It's a three part activity. Part one is student ranking. Part two is partner discussion. And part three is class discussion, trying to get a lot of good engagement here. So basically the way it works is in the first part, the students get a copy of a slideshow that has what they're going to rank. Now, what could that be? It could be all kinds of things. You know, like I've got an example here, like it could be, um, the best energy sources. So you've got like, you know, biomass and wind power and geothermal. It could be a tier list of most influential battles of the Revolutionary War. So you got Bunker Hill and Princeton and, you know, all, Yorktown and all that. Or it could be a tier list of uh, characters in Romeo and Juliet who have the most impact on the plot. And so you've got all your different characters there. It could be famous works of art from the 20th century. And so you've got American Gothic and Nighthawk, you know, all these really well-known, you know, things. Um, from my example that I did, I just used fast food restaurants. <laughs> I would encourage you to do something like this when the students are just trying it the first time, something fun, something light. So they get, oh, I see how this works. And then you can start rotating in your content as you do it again and again in the months to come. But in this case, it's just like best fast food restaurants, you know? And so you get, they get a copy of the slideshow. So, and I've got templates. You can just make copies of my templates. You don't have to create this from scratch. You just put in your, you put it your thing that they're ranking and you put in either the text boxes or the pictures over there. And again, it doesn't have to be best. It's just how well things fit the prompt. It could be, you know, most nutritious fast food restaurants or fast food restaurants with the, you know, best commercials or, or whatever. You know, it's, it's not just best to worst. You can make this prompt a lot more sophisticated. And that's it. So first step, three minutes, maybe, maybe four minutes. You keep this really, really quick and short individually the students rank. So you'd be like, oh, you know, I think Chipotle is S tier, you know, it's the best or whatever, you know, and, you know, maybe they're putting Burger King, you know, further down here. You get the idea. They're dragging and dropping these and they're basically just dropping these in. And they don't have to be, you know, every one on its own, you know, separate level. You can have some that are tied. You can say, yeah. And if, if I'm offending anybody where I'm putting these, I'm just doing this randomly. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not actually really thinking through this and trying to say that, you know, these must be, you know, a certain thing. Uh, but that's just an example, you know? So, but that's the thing the student has to think through. How do I rank these items? based on the prompt. How would I put these in order? So that's the first step. And that's again, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. It's going to be quick. You want them to go through and rank them. Then the next step is really cool. This is partner discussion. So at this point, the students get together in pairs and they compare their rankings. Now, I guarantee you, they're not going to be the same. There's going to be differences. You take any two students with eight or nine or 10 items, there's no way they're going to be the same. And so what they do is they compare them and they try to find something they strongly disagree on. And they take some time to defend their choice for 
one item, just just one thing. So and they don't have to be the same thing. One student could pick, you know, Chick-fil-A and the other student picks, you know, Starbucks. You know, they could say, well, I put mine here and you put it there. Here's why I think it belongs way up here or way down there. And so they take again, this is five minutes, you know, just, you know, two minutes a piece, you know, compare stuff. And you got like two minutes to explain why you did what you did. So we're now we're defending rationale, but we're also being exposed to other viewpoints and arguments. So this is a great interaction between the two students. Then the last phase, and the last phase is the class discussion. So on the very tail end of this slideshow, the very last slide is a Google Form link. They click the Google Form link and that takes them out to a form where they fill in their final choices. So, you know, what did I put Burger King at and Chick-fil-A and Chipotle and they go and they rank them. It's the same thing they did here. They're just officially casting their ballots. They're submitting these because once they do that, the last step is class discussion because all of this filters into a form and the teacher is now going to say, okay, let's see what the class decided. And they'll bring this up and say, okay, it looks like for Burger King, we have mostly an F tier for it, for example, you know, and for Chick-fil-A, this is what we got. And so they're going to go one by one through each item. And at this point, only going to spend one or two minutes per item. Students get a final chance to make an argument to the class about what they think about that final ranking. And I've seen some really neat discussions come up here where it's like, okay, you know, uh, you know, something came up real low and somebody goes, no, no, no. I, I need to give a, a reason to the class. They need to know that I, I don't think that should be down there. You know, and you get some really, really neat class discussion going. So there you go. You go from individual thinking on this to working with a partner to a full class discussion. And that's it. That's the activity. 15 to 30 minutes. A lot of really neat stuff going on there. I've got templates here. Here's the slide template, the form template. You can easily make copies of those and all the directions are here for how you set all of that up and tie it all together. So um, fun activity. I'd love to hear how it goes for you guys. If anybody, uh, you know, uses this, please let me know. And if you make modifications, that's, that's cool too. You know, I mean, it's, it's totally fun. This is just my suggestion and uh, take it and make it work for you. But I would love to hear what people think about all of that. All right. Let's see. I think we got a few things starting to pop up here. Um, uh, Peggy said, uh, did you have to find and save all those food logos to add to the tier list? Oh, yeah. OK. So for the one I did with the fast food logos, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I just did a quick Google search and I just did a Google image search. And I just found some logos and copied and pasted them onto there. Uh, you don't have to use pictures. You know, like I said, a lot of these were just text boxes. You know, this one, like sorting the uh, best energy sources, you know, and what does it mean to be best? I don't know. I mean, that's going to depend. Some people may say, you know, most renewable. Some people may say cost effective. Some may say plentiful. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, that's the, where the argument comes in. But in this case, no, these are just text boxes. I did use emojis to gussy it up a little bit, but it's just text boxes. And you can just do that. You can just add text boxes. That's totally fine. If you want to do pictures, that's fine. Like for the art ones, I just found some uh, pictures of the famous works of art. So that's that's certainly fine if you want to do that as well. And it could work well for, for younger students as well with, with images in there as well. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Um, those are the resources that I was excited to share with you guys uh, this week. I'll go ahead and uh, pop back up here so <laughs> I can see you guys again. Um, if you do have any questions or comments or anything that you would like to still uh, add in, uh, I would love to, uh, to hear from you. So we'll take just a minute as we start to wrap up here. Uh, feel free to throw some some stuff into, into the chat there, and I'll do another pass through to see. In the meantime, while I'm giving you guys one last chance to, to share anything you want, I just want to remind you, you can always get to all of these resources at bit.ly slash CAA-live. And uh, don't forget to connect with me at the top are all the different ways that we can stay connected. Uh, and then don't forget, we don't have one next week. It'll be two weeks from now uh, because of my travel schedule, but I look forward to uh, getting back with you guys then. Uh, let's see uh, what's popping up here. Um, let's see. We've got some, some thanks. That's great. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Peggy was saying, hey, the images are great and very interesting uh, visually, but definitely more time consuming. Yeah, text is totally fine. You could just do text boxes in that without any problem there at all. 
That is fantastic. All right. Um, oh, I did see uh, uh, Federico had a question about uh, something for the future. Um, are there tools I would suggest for work to be using to use with with autistic children in preschool? Hey, I'll be happy to throw that into the uh, into the hopper and see if there's some uh, resources we could look at in the future related to that. Thank you for asking the question. Um, for what it's worth, I do have a resource document on um, uh, tools to support le uh, learners in general, not specifically um, autistic um, uh, for students with autism, but just in general. And that one is at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash support. So for what it's worth, I'll just get that out there for you guys. Um, bit.ly slash Kurtz dash support. That is a document that I maintain where it's um, Lots of resources that can help uh, with uh, accessibility, accommodation, um, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, readability, reading comprehension, behavior, organization, focus, lots and lots of tools there. Don't know if that would be applicable or helpful in this situation, but I do. I, I will mention that real quick as a quick response to that. All right, guys. Well, again, thank you, everybody, for being here. Look forward to learning with you again in a couple of weeks and staying connected with you in between. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your day and talk to you guys again soon. Take care, everybody.